Attention, Sunder 1 Ambulance, Sunder 1 Ambulance. Respond to Route 116 in the area of Bow Hill Road. It's going to be for a motor vehicle accident. Car versus bear. The driver is a little dazed. Control standby 2058. Shelter Control, that's 12. Shelter Control, that's 12. Med 12 is responding to the station. Med 12, you're responding. Uh, the other night we had a call for a car versus a bear and to check out the driver of the car that hit it. There's no such thing as a routine day as a volunteer firefighter. You never know what you're going to get. There's definitely a shortage of firefighters and EMTs, especially in the smaller communities. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is the majority of fire departments are actually call departments or volunteer departments. The, most of us here have a full-time job in addition to this. And part of the interesting thing about this job is that you never know where you'll be or what you'll be doing the next time someone calls 911 and your pager goes off. Last time my pager went off, I was actually walking my dog around uh, my neighborhood. And uh, often, more often than not, we make the joke that uh, at the least convenient times we get a call and, you know, when you're sitting at home and nothing's going on and you're all ready and geared up for a call, nothing will happen. Uh, the last time my pager went off, I was running out the door to, uh, to go to work at about 7.30 in the morning. And it turned out there was a car fire that was uh, just probably 500 feet away from my front door. Last time my, my pager went off, I was actually getting ready to get into bed. Black Friday, I was on my way to go shopping with my sister in the car. I was upstairs talking to my mom on the phone. Last time my pager went off, uh, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, I got out of bed and came here. The types of different emergencies we get could be anything from a chimney fire, brush fire, house fire, uh, or it could be a medical call, it could be something as simple as a dog bite. Uh, these are the types of things that we typically get on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Well, it's really not that much of a time commitment. You're basically, you need to be around at least one day a week for three hours to do the training. And that's really important to make sure that you keep up on all the skills. But other than that, it's just whatever calls you can make. I mean, we've got people on the force who are, you know, work in restaurants, who are teachers, who are nurses, uh, personal trainers you know, all different walks of life and have, you know, different time periods when they're free to attend to calls. Uh, but it's really, it's very accessible to anybody who's interested in doing it. In most fire departments, uh, call fire departments, it is a paid position, um, but, you know, that's not really the reason most of us are doing it. It's a good time commitment, but, um, you know, I have a full-time job. I'm uh, in the process of building a house, so uh, I'm clearing property. So it's really realistic for me to uh, still have the time to do firefighting. It's something I enjoy. Um, it's, uh, it's almost like a hobby, uh, something I can do in my spare time, but it's also very serious and, um, and gives you a lot of structure in your life. You learn a lot of skills when you're becoming a firefighter. You learn kind of the basic first responder skills of CPR and wound treatment, splints, um, you know, how to take care of people in a variety of situations. Uh, you also learn things like water rescue, you know, saving somebody who's gone through the ice. Uh, and you kind of really you learn a confidence in yourself and your abilities when it comes to an emergency situation. Things that I like about it are uh, gives me a lot of skill sets that I don't I don't I didn't have before. I can uh, help people out um, if something happens. I can give somebody CPR. I can do the Heimlich maneuver. I can you know I, I'm trained now to know what to do in an emergency, and that's always a good thing to have. You know. So the biggest problem that certainly are call department has and that a lot of them have is just a lack of membership you know there's uh, people who you know we need there need to be enough people around to answer calls in a timely fashion and uh, you know we often can struggle to do that I think the biggest problem we're finding and it's not limited just to us uh, is people no longer work in town um, 
this used, this is a, a farming community, but a lot of a lot of the farms have either been sold or, or are uh, not run by people who live in town anymore. Uh, we don't have people around town during the day. People uh, are busy. They're busier. Their lives are more hectic. Um, you know, especially if they have kids. You know, one's got soccer, one's got dance, and they're on the same night in different locations. So one parent's one way, one parent's the other. Um, and just an overall lack of volunteerism. So we're always looking for new people to join the fire department. Um, basically, anybody who's over the age of 18 who lives in town or very close to town and is in town a lot would be an ideal candidate and someone who's going to be committed and, and be available to come at a moment's notice when their pager comes up, goes off so they can come and respond and go to whatever the call is. I mean, people think volunteer fire department, well, you know, I, I don't want, you know, I, I don't think I have what it takes to run inside a burning building. I'm not that guy. Um, but there's other, there's other jobs that need to be done besides the run into the burning building and um, and put the fire out. We need people that are willing to help out with um, throwing ground ladders or uh, pulling hose or packing hose or changing bottles uh, or even if you're not interested in the operations end of it, uh, a lot of volunteer fire departments need help with fundraisers and uh, running their associations and, and uh, helping uh, buy equipment that they can't get through uh, local tax tax money or their budget is just not adequate enough to buy or replace equipment. We'll do a lot of the training here at the fire department but it does help if you come from some sort of a background in medical calls because we do have a lot of medical calls that's helpful but if not we can train you to do that as well. Um, fire service if you have some previous fire service that would be helpful too but again we can do the training here at the fire department as well and just someone who's got a good work ethic and ready to do a lot of hard work when they get here. The more people that we have on the fire department, the faster we're going to be able to get to the emergency. I think that's one of the things is, you know, no day is the same. No two calls are the same, yeah. you know, and it's um, one of the things that keeps me going is, is what if that was my mom? What was that? What if that was my dad and no one rolled out to help them? need people to roll out, you know, and we need you. Attention all available units, respond Union Street in the area of 14 for our structure fire. Attention all units, all available fire units, respond Union Street in the area of number 14 for a structure fire. Reports of people inside. Attention to responding 26 Union Street, reported structure fire. Everyone is out of the house. Show you responding at 159.